Father Papura, first I have to say congratulations. This weekend you were essentially conferred as a soldier of Christ, which is not a small honor by any stretch. When did you receive word that you were going to be invested a Knight of the Order? So I received word in, in the spring that uh, myself along with six other Brooklyn priests uh, would be invested as members of of the equestrian order of uh, the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre. So it was a few months ago that I found out. And the ceremony, talk to us a little bit about that. When, when you finally got into the into the cathedral and, and this was actually about to happen, what were you feeling? It was, it was actually a two-day ceremony. The first, uh, the vigil took place um, on Friday at uh, the Church of St. Ignatius of Loyola on Park Avenue, which is really a, a splendid church, one of the most beautiful in New York City. And it was at that that we took our oath um, and signed the papers, and then the the priests uh, were then, the mosettas were placed on us, the mosettas, the liturgical garb that's proper to the order uh, that the priests then have the privilege of wearing. So it's during that ceremony that we receive it, and then the part two is at St. Patrick's Cathedral on, on, on Saturday afternoon, the full, the full mass with all the, the knights and ladies of the order. Now, for those viewers who may not have heard the name uh, but are not clear as to its meaning, the Holy Sepulchre Order is dedicated to responding to the needs of Catholics in the Holy Land. How so, Father? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the oldest orders in the Church when it comes to these uh, question orders. It was founded in the 11th century. Uh, originally, um, it, it took part in the Crusades, but also to, to safeguard Christians that were going in pilgrimage to the Holy Land. In these last couple of centuries, it's changed a bit in that it focuses more on uh, sustaining the Christian community. Mm -hmm. When we think of the Palestinians, uh, the Palestinians are descendants of Christ. So the order looks at itself as being, as being uh, caretakers of the descendants of Christ, the Palestinians. So the people and then the shrines that are important because they're part of our salvation, that that was the land in which Christ chose uh, to to become incarnate, where he where he lived, he walked. Everything we know about Christ took place there. So it's a very special place. So the order uh, now dedicates itself to to caring for the Palestinians and for safeguarding the shrines. Father, challenges to to Christians to our faith has been has been so persistent. Now, of course, it is no exception. These days, we focus much of our attention on the plight of Christians in Syria, in Egypt, and in Iraq, uh, Africa, North Korea, all over the world. Some perspective, please, Father. How serious is the plight of Christians in the Holy Land proper? Well, the Holy Land, it's it's you know. Before this most recent incident, the, the numbers of Christians in, in, in that region have been decreasing consistently. So it's been a concern that, you know, in many areas of conflict, um, the people that were there believe that the Christians are really the key to maintaining whatever peace is possible, mm -hmm. that they're kind of the buffer between some of the other groups uh, that are in conflict. So the Christian presence is very important. And we see it's very dire um, that we see cities, particularly in Iraq and Syria that have been completely, uh, you know, destroyed, all Christian presence has been, has been eliminated. So the whole region, it, it's really, um, it's beyond crisis at this, at this point, that the suffering of our brother and sis brothers and sisters in, in oh, Christian brothers and sisters is, is that serious, that they're losing lives, um, that their, their, their homes are being destroyed, that they're being forced to migrate for, to just safeguard whatever, whatever they have left. So, um, it's worse um, than people might believe. Father, Cardinal Dolan in the past has drawn a parallel between earthly Jerusalem and heaven, saying that our motivation in being knights and ladies of the Holy Sepulchre is to get to heaven. What else motivates you, Father Papura? Uh, in reference to the order? In reference to the order and in reference to your service to our diocese. I mean, you know, you, you, you do so much work for us and with us. Where do you find your inspiration? What motivates you? Yeah, I mean, I, I get my I, my inspiration. I think a lot from um, from the hopes and dreams I see expressed in people, their aspirations, their desires, and particularly when it comes uh, to faith um, and the role the priest plays in that. Um, that there's a lot that the church used to offer that maybe we're not offering now, but there's still things that we can offer and, and people are longing for. So the preaching of the gospel, uh, the service to those in need, the offering of the sacraments, that's what 
I get my inspiration from mm -hmm. this. I see it in the people, how much they desire to have it. What is your first order of business in the time we have left Father Purpura as, as a Knight of the Order now? Well, it's just beginning, um, and I really look at it as now being one of my primary charities as something that I've taken on this responsibility, um, and as much as possible, I will support um, these initiatives that are put forward by the order, and then also to be a spiritual assistance to the other members. You know, we're very proud now of how many members, there's 10,000 members um, in North America, and it's really growing, and they're providing uh, in so many ways. So. As a priest, I just hope to assist in whatever way I can. Thank you so much, Father Papur. We're very proud of you and your brother priest. Thank you so much. We'll continue to pray for you. We appreciate it. God bless.